next six days, I'll be pack rafting and hiking 130 kilometers deep into the New Zealand wilderness. Now this region of the west coast of New Zealand, or Aotearoa as it's known to the Maori, is home to some of the most pristine wilderness you'll find anywhere on earth. It's renowned for its big mountains, ancient forests, gin clear rivers, and world class fishing. However, sitting at the bottom of the world, in a region known as the Roaring Forties, the weather here can be wild and unpredictable. Leaving Australia, I make the three hour journey across the ditch and embark on what is sure to be the trip of a lifetime. I get lost looking in your eyes, a little shook up at the side of you. Yes, it is so goddamn beautiful. <laughs> Is this the track? Oh, that that is a deep one. That is a deep one. Oh, sometimes you've just got to embrace the suck. The sand flies are f***ed. <laughs> oh man. Ah, I feel like Frodo paddling through Middle Earth. It's actually insane. And we're off. So 130 kilometers over six or seven days for the beautiful New Zealand wilderness. Let's do it. Far out. Have a look at this place. Snow-capped peaks, gin clear water, beautiful sunshine. Mate, New Zealand, you're absolutely turning it on. Alright, well, boat's all pumped up. Um, we're gonna jump in the water now. It's about one o'clock. It's a little bit later than I would have liked to have started, but I had a bit of a fair bit of running around to do this morning. We've got about 25 or 28 kilometers um, to get to the lake, which is where I want to set up camp tonight. But there is a, the river is moving pretty fast, so I think we should be able to get there in time. And we're off. Wow, I can't believe this is actually happening. I've been wanting to do this trip for yeah, quite a few months, been sort of like looking at the maps and reading all about it. So it feels bloody good to actually finally be here and doing it. So this river is a class one and class two. So there's no real rapids. There's like one little section where there's class three rapids, but you can easily portage that around. So if you guys are wondering why I'm not wearing a helmet, from what I've read, I you don't need a helmet for this river. Anything I find that's a little bit too sketchy, then I can always just get portage. Nice flow to the river. Well, we're definitely not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> Very different uh, back home. It's just such cool vegetation. All the tree ferns. I'm not quite sure what the trees are. They just have these massive, like, snow capped peaks. It's beautiful. Crystal clear water as well. <sighs> this is so good. <laughs> So even though this river is graded as class one and two, the main issue with this river is there's a lot of timber in it. They had some floods back in 2020 and it's washed a lot of trees down the river. So all throughout the river, there's probably meant to be a lot of strainers. So I've got to be pretty careful. And I'm glad I pulled over to scout this one out because I don't feel very confident going through it. There's um, yeah, quite a bit of timber right in the sort of white water section. So if I didn't, if I just decided to bomb it, I could have got stuck in that and it got in trouble pretty easily. So I'm glad I pulled over. I'm just going to carry the raft around it. So yeah, have a look at all that timber. Gotta be pretty careful. Wow. This section is stunning. 
mountains and just in the beautiful forest. Wow, <laughs> this is one of the most beautiful places I've been. <sighs> that is insane. It's like a bloody postcard. Such a stunning part of the river. <laughs> the whole river is stunning, but you just get really good um, really good vantage point of just the, the ranges behind us. Breathtaking, absolutely breathtaking. Alright, well I think we're coming up to the section where there's the grade three rapids. So I believe there's a track around here where you can just portage around it. So I think we'll do that. So we've just reached the junction with the other river that I'm going to be paddling down in a few days time. And then we've just got about, I think it's about four or five kilometers to go on this river. And we'll reach the lake where we should be on um, the camp for tonight. And yeah, it seems to be such a beautiful afternoon. Like, so nice and sunny. It's gorgeous. Oh, we have made it to the lake. <laughs> Thank goodness, I'm buggered. Well, we finally reached the lake. That sun is like almost about to dip behind those mountains. It's getting pretty late now, like I haven't checked the time, but I can it's probably, yeah, close to 7.30, I reckon. But I uh, yeah, found this nice little beach, which is still in the sun. Um, I think it's a nice little spot up there. I can probably set up the tent and Hope in the morning you can get a really nice, um, yeah, some nice sunrise over the mountains as well. So let's get camp stuff and get some food into me because I am starving. <laughs> oh, the sand flies are f***ed. <laughs> oh man. They are absolutely eating me alive. These things are the devil. Oh, they absolutely kill. 
Oh, I don't have any blood left me by the end of this trip. <laughs> Alright, supper time. And so for dinner we got the wild mushroom and lamb risotto. I'm so keen for this. Like, what's the time? It's quarter past nine. <laughs> So late. Also, didn't have um, lunch today either, so I'm absolutely starving. It's amazing how good these things are when you're out on an adventure. Like at home, you would pretty much like never eat this, but when you're out here, they taste so bloody good. Man, what a day. Like, I knew this place was going to be picturesque, but is so much better than I expected. Like, oh, just paddling down like a gin clear, like turquoise blue river and just snow capped peaks. Like the mountains are just, they honestly look like they're fake. It's just unbelievable. Just so different to what I'm used to, eh? Oh, absolutely loved it. It was such a good day, so stoked. Really nice river as well. Like even doing it solo, um, there was like nothing sort of like too challenging, so. So glad I decided to come here. Like I only booked this trip about 36 hours before I actually flew out. <laughs> I left at very last minute. I got home from um, from camping over New Year's and I didn't get back to work till the 15th. So I decided on like the, was it the third? I decided to book the tickets and I flew out on the fifth. So yeah, very last minute um, trip, like just trying to get the flights and the transport and like hiring a car and stuff and getting all my gear sorted, like it was a, a bit of a rush, but man, like, Finally being here, it feels so bloody good. All right guys, well I think we might crawl into bed now. It's about 10 o'clock and I'm pretty sick of getting eaten by um, body sand flies. So yeah, I think we'll try and get up um, pretty early, probably around about five o'clock in the morning so we can pack camp down and get out on the water by about six-ish. I wanna try and yeah, smash out as much of this lake as I can in the morning before any um, sort of morning. Oh, there's a seal, oh my goodness. It's a seal. Oh, I hope he comes up. I can't believe that. Oh, where is he? Wow, I can't believe I just saw a seal. That was crazy. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, I'm pretty keen to crawl into bed, so I'll catch you guys nice and early in the morning. Beautiful morning. 
All right, so we just pulled up on this little pebbly beach here. Uh, so it's just hit after 10 o'clock and I've done about nine and a half kilometers and we've got about six Ks to go. Although the wind has started to pick up and sure enough, it's a bloody headwind. So it's gonna make paddling a little bit, a little bit more difficult and my muscles are already starting to feel pretty sore. Uh, worst case scenario, there is actually a track that um, follows like through the bush um, along the edge of the lake. So we could always try and find the track and then just hike the rest of it, but I find it's a little bit too hard to push um, against the headwind because being an inflatable raft, they are definitely not very aerodynamic. So we'll see how we go. Man, what a beautiful day. And this forest back here is absolutely gorgeous. I didn't really know what to expect um, with the forest in New Zealand and Honestly, it is absolutely beautiful. Just like ferns everywhere, just plants growing on top of plants. It's really pretty. Like how gorgeous is this? strong and it's creating some waves so I think I might try and pull into shore and see if we can walk the rest of it. Alright so we've just pulled up it's like way too windy to keep paddling so we'll have to sort of walk the rest which I think we can just walk around this sort of beach here. I think it's about 10 kilometers um, to where I sort of want to get to for tonight so it's still a bit of a trek but I think we'll probably walk the rest but uh, yeah just pulled up in this really pretty spot we've got this river coming in from the mountains over here and the water is just crystal clear and I uh, also looking up the, the lake towards the mountains so I might stop and have some lunch but I also might um, get the rod set up and have a quick flick of this river and see if there's any trout hiding in that Nice brown. Come on. There we go. Nice. You little ripper. It's a beautiful brown trout to start off the trip. He's a nice size, so I kind of like keep him for lunch. Lovely brown trout, which we're gonna cook up for lunch. Man, what a spot, eh? Like, looking up the lake, it's just like beautiful and sunny, mountains in the distance. Not a bad spot for lunch. fish, some cheese, and just some ranch dressing. Man, I'm absolutely loving the forest around here. It's so beautiful. Look how we got all the tree ferns. You almost like fool yourself into thinking you're on like some tropical island somewhere. I did not think NZ was going to be like this. All right, we're just leaving the beach and into the forest we go. This place is stunning. 
It feels like a little enchanted forest. Wow, that is absolutely gorgeous. Well, we finally made it to the coast. Now we're just going to make our way over to that corner, and that's where we'll set up camp for tonight. We bloody made it. Well, we finally made it to Martins Bay. Man, what a beautiful afternoon. So, there is a hut here. I just went inside and there's um, one bloke from France here and just had a nice little chat with him. I think I'll probably end up just setting up the tent out here on this little grassy hill. And uh, yeah, got a really nice view as well. But man, I'm absolutely exhausted today. Today has been such a slog. I think it's like 7 p.m. now and I've been going since, what, 6.30 this morning, so. It has been a massive day, so I might even go for a quick little swim because I'm feeling pretty grubby. We'll come back up, get the tent set up, and yeah, just chill out for a bit. That felt amazing. <laughs> So tonight, we're going to do the honey slew chicken. Man, these bloody sand flies. <laughs> Man, what a day. It's been a really big day, but I really enjoyed it. Just like this morning, just paddling across that lake uh, when it was nice and glassy and just had like the sunlight lighting up the snow-capped peaks and those like dolphins or whatever they were just like swimming around me. It was a really special morning. Like, I really enjoyed um, the first part of that paddle. Then well, cooking up a nice little trout for lunch and then that walk, man. Walking through that fern forest was honestly like one of the most beautiful little walks ever done. It was absolutely stunning. It was like magical, so. Yeah, honestly, I've been absolutely loving this trip so far. It's been a really fun couple of days, like beat every expectation and just the weather as well. It's been such a, a gorgeous time out here on the West Coast. So, absolutely loving it. Um, tomorrow we've got about a, I think it's about 13 kilometers um, hike around the coast to the next beach. And then we're gonna try and sort of push on and hike through the bush um, to the next river, which is about another nine kilometers. So I think we've got about 22 kilometers to do tomorrow. So. Hopefully we can try and do it. I'd like to try and camp at um, yeah, the Pike River tomorrow night, but we'll have to see how we go. Like, the walking's not too hard. It's just carrying that bloody heavy pack. Like, my shoulders are absolutely killing me. So, we'll see how we go tomorrow. I think we should be able to do it, but I think it'll definitely be a, a pretty big day. But, um, yeah, pretty keen to you know, just eat dinner and crawl into bed. Like I said, I'm pretty buggered, so pretty keen to um, yeah, get a bit of an early night tonight. Man, what a sleep. <laughs> it's like almost nine o'clock. I think I slept for like nearly 10 and a half hours, which I really needed it. I was um, just so exhausted yesterday. I've had like a really big few days and felt pretty sleep deprived, but 
Yeah, waking up to a bit of a grey morning this morning. Um, we're just going to cookie pack camp down and have a few muesli bars of brekkie and try and hit the trail, which I don't really know how keen I am to smash out this 22Ks. I just feel like so sore all over. Like the muscles on my traps um, are so sore from carrying that pack yesterday. And I've got like chapped lips. I've got a, I cut my finger as well yesterday. I feel burnt. My big toes are like the nails are feeling really sore from the boots. I'm just falling apart. <laughs> it's only day three. But um, yeah, so let's uh, try and yeah, pack everything down and try and hit this trail pretty soon. Sail colony out here. Oh, she's getting pretty muddy. Oh man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, that that is a deep one. That is a deep one. <laughs> oh, sometimes you've just got to embrace the suck. Hey, <laughs> oh. Oh, that section was <laughs> Oh, I've got a stick attached to me. Oh man, that was so muddy and overgrown. Let's just start opening out a little bit here. A really nice view of the coast. Well, this has proven to be a very muddy and pretty overgrown track as well. But the good thing about being in New Zealand and not in Australia, you don't have to worry about snakes. Like, if I was walking through this kind of train back in Oz, like snakes would just be at the top of your mind, but at least here you don't have to worry about it, which is nice. Wow, this little whale washed up on the beach here. Not quite sure what kind of whale it is. I can't see any sort of bite marks on or anything either, so I'm not quite sure um, what it died from. Yeah, pretty sad to see. Alright, we're almost at the beach and we just want to walk along the beach to the end. And there's a pain, there's a track that sort of follows the base of that hill and then it sort of like cuts over the saddle and then puts you into sort of the valley where those little mountains are in the distance and that's where the Pike River runs, I believe. So we want to go all the way over there. Can someone please tell me how like the Maori or basically just any indigenous culture where they had to deal with insects, how they did it? Like, <laughs> it's absolutely insane. Back in the day, life must have been just bloody hell. Oh, man, they are everywhere. Uh, so it's about 2.30, just pulled over for some lunch. I've pretty much finished this like rocky coastline here. I've just got to do the beach walk, which I think the beach is about three or four kilometers long. Hope I can get there within the sort of next hour. And then I'll decide then whether I want to sort of push on towards the Pike River, which is another nine kilometers. Um, but yeah, feeling pretty, pretty tired, eh? Like, 
this uh, sort of coastline's taken out of me. I was getting really hungry and thirsty then, so we'll have some lunch and then we'll um, yeah, continue on. Alright, well we've made it to the end of the beach. I think it's like just after 4 o'clock, so I think I'm going to push on and um, try and make it over to the pike. It's about a three hour walk or nine kilometers. I'm pretty keen to pull up stumps here, but I think I'll be um, a lot more stoked to actually finally get to the pike, set up camp there for tonight, and that way tomorrow morning I can just wake up and just jump in the raft. I keep talking about how nice the bush is here, but have a bloody go at it. It is so green. It is literally just plants coming on top of plants. Oh, it is stunning. It's like something out of Narnia or something like that, eh? Wow. Look at those blisters. Oh, these feet are aching. Well, it's just hit um, about 6.30 and I'm like almost halfway to the pike, so I reckon maybe like another hour and a half and we should get there. He cannot come soon enough. <laughs> I am so over walking. That was really cool. Just saw about a, about a dozen deer. Some went that way, some went that way. Very cool. I think we're almost to the river. It's like after 8.30 as well, so pretty keen to get there. Everybody did it. That was a slog. I can barely hold the camera up, my arm is so sore. Yeah, so it's about 9.30 now. I think I found a little spot to sub camp. It's actually a bit tricky around here. There's quite a lot of sort of tusky grass, but I think I found a flat enough spot. So let's set the tent up. probably one of the toughest days I've ever done hiking. That was absolutely brutal. I left um, what, first camp at 10 o'clock this morning and I arrived here at 9.30. So obviously I stopped for maybe a half an hour lunch break, but apart from that, I was walking. So what's that? Like almost, almost 11 hours of hiking. I'm absolutely wrecked. I got blisters on my feet, but like, oh, I just, I don't think I've ever been so exhausted. Literally when I got to camp, my vision started to go like a little bit hazy. It's like really strange, I never had that happen before. So, <laughs> it's definitely time to pull up stumps. So, but at least we made it to the pike. I'm really glad I'm actually following here. So tomorrow morning I don't have to do that hike because that was only meant to take three hours and that ended up taking four and a half hours to get here from the beach. So, this goes to show how like slow going my walking was with that heavy pack. and been a very big day but in saying that like walking through that forest even though I was absolutely wrecked it was so so stunning like just absolutely beautiful it felt like I was in Avatar or something the forest around here is just unbelievable I'm actually in love with it <laughs> 
But anyway, I'm just going to have some food and crawl into bed and I'm probably going to have a sleep in tomorrow. I think I've definitely earned it after today. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Yeah, it's uh, about 10 o'clock, had a, a very nice sleep in. I didn't get to bed till about 11.30 last night. And like when I just laid down, I was absolutely wrecked. Like my body was just aching. So I needed a really nice sleep and that's what I got. Working on to another cloudy day today. I think the forecast said, um, I don't think, I said maybe showers today. I think tomorrow there might be some showers and I think the day after there's meant to be some rain coming, so. But uh, at least today there is no hiking. <laughs> I'm so stoked about that, eh? Like honestly, my shoulders, I don't think they could um, handle another day of hiking. Um, so yeah, keen to get the, the raft in the water and I think we've got about, I think around 25 or 30 kilometers to get down the river. Um, there's no real sort of plan for the next sort of day or two. I'm just gonna, there's a big lake further down called Lake Alabaster, so I think I'll probably try and get towards that. Camp around there for tonight, and then tomorrow we'll yeah, paddle across the lake and find somewhere else to run up. So let's get some food into us, get camp back down, and we'll get back out in the water. Now you're talking. <laughs> this is a much better way to travel. How clear is that water? It is crystal clear. Get over how beautiful this water is. I'm having such a nice day. Oh, I feel so at peace right now. This is so beautiful. Oh, this is such an awesome trip. <laughs> Honestly, can't wipe a smile off my face there. Eh? rigged up the rod. It's got a little brown trout repiler on it. I reckon I have a bit of a, a cast on that way down. Got a little rapid coming up as well. Let's see if we can get over to that gravel bank. Oh no, I'm losing that losing. <laughs> it's pretty tricky in the back row. This should be sweet here. Really nice 
nice brown. Wow. Wow, that is a monster. Come here, mate. <laughs> oh, oh. He was a stonker. Ah, oh, he was honestly like too big for the net. He thrashed the hook out. Ah, oh, damn it. He was like, probably about that big. The one that got away. Well, we just made it down the first section of the pike. Now we've got this lake here that's about two or three kilometers across that so we'll paddle across now. And I think when we get to the other side, we might stop and have some lunch because it's about 2.30. Well, I've just changed up to a little Tassie Devil Oar. We'll just use this as we um, make our way across the lake. All right, fish on. He's jumping a bit. I don't think he's um, massive. There we go. Nice. Nice little brown. Could have kept him for lunch, but I've got some salami and some cheese that I really need to eat. So, well, I might save the, the fish for lunch for tomorrow. All right, fish on again. Brown. That's a really nice eating size. <laughs> oh, it's a shame. All right, we're on again. I felt like a big strike as well. So, oh, nice. Is a really nice size. Oh, you guys, quick look. What a stonker. That is a beautiful fish. Right, pull that back into the water. See you, buddy. There he goes. That was a really nice fish. Lunchtime. This um, cheese is looking a little bit how you going. Still smells alright, but it's starting to go a little bit sort of like wet and slimy. Like what's well, it's Tuesday now, so it hasn't been refrigerated since um, about this time on Friday. So what's that like? Four full days. Let's give it a little taste test. Tastes fine. Yeah, I think it should be sweet. What about this salami? It smells like salami. <laughs> so that's a good start. That tastes good. This place doesn't even seem real. <laughs> I'm just sitting here and there's this like I don't know, 50 foot waterfall just like gushing out of a cave over there. Big mountains. It's one hell of a place. Had a really nice morning this morning. Well, not even the morning, <laughs> kind of the day. It's like four o'clock now. But yeah, just had a really nice day so far. Like just paddling down that river it was so nice and peaceful. So beautiful. And like, just the water. It's like so clear. I can't believe how clear it is. It's amazing. Um, like I said, it's about four o'clock, so we'll get back on the water pretty soon, and um, we'll try and make our way to camp.
fish on. Brown. We got some really beautiful light lighting up the mountains. I think it's um just hit like 7:30 or quarter to eight. So I'm just gonna try and find a camp now. I think around the corner there might be a spot that might be right. This is going to be camp for tonight. Unfortunately, the clouds have caught up the snow capped peak, which is a bit of a shame, but they've got a really nice sort of sandy beach here. There's also a waterfall just over there, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, let's get the tent set up, and hopefully, with any luck, the clouds might go away. <laughs> might get, a, get to see the mountains. Alright, so for dinner tonight we're having cockavin. <laughs> I don't know how you say that. Never had this one before, so keen to give it a go. It comes with um some mashed potato as well, so yeah, it should be tasty. Alright, well, dinner's about done. Bloody black flies are loving their face tonight. Oh man, this looks pretty good, eh? And here we are eating dinner once again at 10 p.m. <laughs> that's crazy. Wow, that's delicious. That is really nice. It's like a red wine sort of like um, stew. That is delicious. Oh man, these black flies. Not black flies, sand flies. Ah, drive me crazy. But yeah, what a day, honestly. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. This trip is shaping up to be the best trip I've ever done. That was such a gorgeous river to paddle down. Gin clear water and just paddling through the most beautiful valley. There's just like waterfalls coming off the mountains like left, right and center. Spectacular, <laughs> honestly. Oh, this place is just too good. Apart from the sand flies, this place is always perfect. Kind of remind, okay, I've never been to Alaska, but I feel like this place is like Alaska without the bears. That's the vibe I'm getting. All right, see you guys in the morning.
for another morning, another attack of the sand flies. <laughs> they are out in full force this morning. But yeah, even though it's uh, overcast today, it's a really beautiful morning. It's really nice and still. Good old cliff bar for brekkie. So today, I think we've got a, I think it's about six or seven kilometer lake paddle. And then we've got an 11 kilometer hike. And I think we're gonna try and camp back on the Holyford River. And then tomorrow, I think we'll probably hike out, which is another, I think like nine Ks or something. So that's a plan. All right, so a little map update. So yeah, the first day we went down the Holyford River, camped um, just down sort of on the southern end of Lake Macero. And the second day we paddled across Lake Macero. Um, we sort of got out of the water where this kind of river comes into the lake and that's where I caught that trout. And then uh, we hiked along this track all the way to Martins Bay. And then on the third day we hiked around the coast, along the beach, and then we cut across this saddle. And that's where we stayed on the third night. And then yesterday we paddled down Pike River, across this lake, down the river some more, and we just camped at the northern end of Lake Alabaster. And then today we'll paddle across Lake Alabaster, and then we'll start hiking up this track along the Holyford River, and we'll probably camp halfway up. Um, I believe there's a waterfall over here I'd like to check out, and we can yeah, probably camp along the Holyford River somewhere. And then tomorrow we'll have about a, I think it's like 9K hike out back to the car. I thought it's about time to bring out the head net. <laughs> Look a bit silly, but it does the job. Actually, enjoy my hot chocolate and pit. Oh, <laughs> I went to take a sip. <laughs> there we go. Come and get me now, flies. the rain but it is so beautiful out on the water today like I said just all the mist coming on the mountains and just barely any wind it is beautiful be the most beautiful paddle is complete glass off just a light little drizzle got a, a family of ducks just over here <laughs> I'm in heaven honestly I am absolutely loving this place. I know I've said this probably a thousand times, but just, it is so goddamn beautiful. <laughs> I really hope the camera is doing it justice, but just the feeling that I get here is just such a nice feeling. It's just so peaceful and like, I love my plants and just like the diversity in the plants around here are just, it's just so beautiful, like there's just plants literally going on top of plants. It's just... <sighs> I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love this place. <sighs> and it's just like these beautiful little beaches just all up and down this, um, this lake. <sighs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> how I spoke about in that Tasmania video I did last year about those it moments I think I'm having one right now <laughs> I 
I'm just walking around this little beach here, just like in absolute awe. I swear, I've just got like little tears and stuff, eh? It's just... Oh. I don't think the camera's gonna do it justice, but I'm just so at peace here. It is just... It's just so beautiful. <laughs> Very special. Nature, baby. <laughs> well, this has turned out to be such a gorgeous paddle. I think we're nearing the end of the lake, so we'll jump out, chuck the pack on. I think we've got about an 11 or 12 kilometer hike. All right, fish on. Is this the one? Oh, is he on? Oh, he might have gotten off. Oh. Spewing. All right, fish on. Let's not lose him. Oh. Is he still on? I don't know if he's still on. If I've lost enough. That is the third fish I've lost today. I wonder if it's because I've changed over to this single hook. Most likely. Frustrating. Well, as much as I didn't want that to end, uh, that's it for the pack craft and for this trip. So we'll get that pack down, we'll get the pack on and we'll get hiking. And off we go. We've got about 10 or 11 Ks to cover. Honestly, cannot get over how lush the forest is. It is like such a vibrant, rich green. So one thing I have found kind of strange about New Zealand is the fact that there's like no animals. Like apart from birds, that's pretty much like all I've seen. I went a couple of deer yesterday, but they're introduced. So. I yeah, from what I understand, I'm pretty sure New Zealand's like, they're renowned for being the island of birds. Like, I don't think they've got any native large animals. Pretty much everything here has been introduced, like deer and tar and possums and things. So, yeah, it's quite strange. And even like insects, like, at home in Australia, there's bloody stuff crawling around everywhere. There's always spiders or lizards or ants. Like, even here, I haven't even seen a single ant, which is... It's just crazy, so yeah, it's really quite strange. I wonder why that is. I wonder why New Zealand sort of evolved with like no large animals. I guess uh, one good thing about it is there's nothing out here that really wants to hurt you. <laughs> We've got some pretty wild weather moving through. Now I was kind of hoping to sort of camp over on top of that sort of like sandbank there, but with this rain moving in, I don't think that's a, a smart idea because like you never know how much it's raining further upstream and obviously this river does flood. So I think we might have to play it safer, unfortunately. Um, and there is a hut not too far away. So I might actually probably just go back towards that and just camp outside the hut for tonight.
All right, well, the rain is well until we set in now, so let's hunker down. Well, what a way to end the trip. Not quite what I um, envisioned for the last night camp, but this is what it is. In the meantime, have a look at these feet. Oh man, these feet have seen better days. They've just got blisters and cuts all over them. And they've just been demolished by sand fly bites as well. Now they are some sad looking feet. <laughs> I probably should have wore socks with the shoes, but I didn't, and this is the result. All right, we've got some fresh clothes on, feeling pretty warm and dry now, so I'm just going to cook dinner and, um, yeah, pretty much go to bed, so I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Well, it has been a very wet night. It's about 9 a.m. and it hasn't stopped raining for, like, yeah, 12 hours, so it is going to be a very wet hike out of here. <laughs> but, well, um, if we get camp back down and get back down the trail, we've got about 9 kilometers um, until we get back to the car. nearing the end of the trip and man what an adventure definitely up there is probably the best trip I've ever been on full of highs and lows some amazing scenery stunning forests beautiful gin clear rivers trout epic campsites man that was one hell of a trip Just after I said nothing in New Zealand could hurt me, something flew into my eye. <laughs> oh, that is so weird. Oh, that is weird to do. <laughs> Sand flies? Oh, f <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> How is this the track? Oh, man. Oh, that, that is a deep one. That is a deep one. Oh, sometimes you've just got to embrace the suck. This trail is never ending. It just goes and goes and goes. I'm absolutely buggered. <laughs> You shall not pass. I had to do at least one Lord of the Rings reference while I was out here. I feel like Frodo paddling through Middle Earth. It's actually insane. Wow. All right, I'm going backwards. I need to turn around. I don't know if I can afford enough memory cards. <laughs> I know I've said this probably a thousand times, but it is so goddamn beautiful. <laughs> I lost my sunnies. I don't know <laughs> where they are. It wouldn't be a pack craft trip without losing something, would it? And they are some sad looking feet. <laughs> so they said to come to New Zealand. Mountains, rivers, waterfalls, and sand flies. <laughs> At least they got a nice view to make up for it. <laughs>